This is Live with Ryan Reese. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Well, honestly, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I have one of my good friends in the studio, Aaron, and his beautiful daughters. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about dating tonight. But I don't have my wingman, Sean McKean or Melinda. So I'm a little intimidated right now. That's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. It's getting wild. <laughs> and what I didn't tell you guys, I don't know if you guys know, but obviously we are streaming um, a live webcast too, so people can see you guys that are joining oh. in. So don't pick your nose. <laughs> and tuck it one. in. Yeah, tuck. If you got the gut, <laughs> suck it. <laughs> For me and your dad, suck it in. <laughs> Ate too many tacos. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're going to talk about dating, and it's a serious issue. Because, I mean, obviously, I grew up, we, we share a lot of similarities, all of us. You know, I, I grew up under, a, my dad was a pastor, is a pastor. You guys have the same deal. Your dad's a pastor. And, and your dad, I've known forever. When did we meet, Aaron? Way back in, um, in the 80s. 1989 when I went on staff with uh, Golden Springs. Calvary yeah. Chapel, West, West Covina. Covina. yeah. Now, you and Nate were living <clears throat> in an RV behind the church, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we were sold out for Jesus. We were a part of the Jesus movement oh, we got, in the 1980s. 1980s. <laughs> the, well, the end of the 80s. We, yeah. just, we were just sold out. We just wanted to serve God any way we could. And you lived in the back of an RV in <laughs> back of the church, and you guys were doing janitorial yep. and just seeing what God was going to do. Yeah, that's, that's where it all started. It and was, God did big things. Oh, yeah, it was huge. It was just a, a blessing to be part of the... The work that I remember Chuck saying on, on Thursday nights, just find out where the spirit is moving and jump in. And jump in. Yeah. And when you did that, not only did you find the spirit, but you found your oh, beautiful yeah. wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because the Holy that's Spirit right, that's right. pushed her on into your... I remember because you were single and ready uh, to mingle. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you'd always make these jokes. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, God brought this, this girl, Wendy, your wife, yeah. into your life. And then... Mm -hmm. Here you have these <laughs> wow. beautiful daughters, which I'm looking at you guys now, just thinking about it. I got three daughters coming and I'm like, oh my goodness gracious, <laughs> I'm going to be in this same situation. But you have four. Yes, we Kayla need, from South we Carolina. Actually, we got to pull her in. She's, she's on the phone. So we're going to go ahead and pull her in now and get Kayla. Kayla, how you doing? I'm good. All right, so now <laughs> you are with all your sisters. Look at how excited they get. And, <laughs> are you guys sisters. excited? Yeah. Because she's from South Carolina. She's living in South Carolina now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let me just run through the ages here. And, and really quick, we're going to get your mic, Aaron. Pull, go ahead and pull your mic in a little bit closer. Well, to I can you, go my Or butt. scoot in. I'll scoot in a little bit. Just yeah. so we can get a good, clear signal. We have Kayla, which is 24, from South Carolina. Then we have Kelsey, 22, mm -hmm. living here. But the difference is you're married with a baby. Nice. And we have Brooke, that is 20 years old. And we have Hope, which is 18. Mm -hmm. And my hat goes off to you. I'm not even wearing a hat, but it goes off to you <laughs> for having that many girls in a row. That's insane. Beautiful thing, though. Very crazy. Yeah, so tonight, though, I want to talk about dating because it's, it's, a, it's a big issue in the church. We get people calling in all the time, you girls. Uh, and there's girls that are calling in. They're like, yeah, I'm dating this guy, and he's not a Christian. And I'm like... Wait a minute, hold on. Like that that's that's the first problem. And we're gonna get mm -hmm. into that stuff a little bit more. Yeah. But then there's even when you get a little bit more into it, you start talking to these people and you're like, Well, so he's not a Christian. I'm like, Well, are you guys having sex? And then they're like, it gets quiet. <laughs> I'm like, Okay, now we even have a bigger problem. <laughs> you know, it's like so tonight I wanna I want you guys to talk to the crowd that's out there that are listening. You're gonna be hitting talking to parents. There's gonna be people that are listening. I don't it doesn't matter how old you are, because Christian dating is Christian dating. Mm -hmm. Whether you're fifty years old dating and you're single or you're an, a sixteen year old kid, it's all based on what God's called how God's called us mm -hmm. to live our lives. And that's to be holy as he is holy and not to give yourself away. Right. Because when you do, you end up in 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 not cool situations. Mm -hmm. And that's why God puts these guidelines out for us so we don't end up in situations that I have. Right. Going through abortions and pregnancies and mm -hmm. dude, chaos, bad relationships, mm -hmm. dating bad girls, or mm -hmm. in your case, mm -hmm. bad boys. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's that's just how it goes. So, first of all, let's just take it from the top and let's talk about how was it, first of all, growing up. We're going to start, I guess we'll just go from left to right. Okay. From here. So, we'll start with uh, you, uh, Kelsey. Um, how was it growing up with um, a dad that's a, a pastor? Was it 
easy? Was it strict? Was it <laughs> crazy? It was all of the above. It was <laughs> crazy when you get older. It's easy when you're young. Um, I don't know. There's different challenges in every age. So depending on what you're going through and the the help he's going to give you with a godly perspective can sometimes be hard to understand or easy to understand depending on what stage you are in life. Right. And you? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I liked it a lot, um, especially when I would have like hard questions since he was a pastor, like he would always have the answer. Mm -hmm. um, I never really have it, had a difficult time. I still don't. So you didn't, you didn't think it was like a, a strict program or it, like it is strict? <clears throat> Not really. Because I mean, there are pastors who have like sons and daughters who are strict, but he wasn't one of those like super crazy ones. Well, let's, wait, let's really quick, let's go back to Kelsey. <laughs> but Kelsey, but did you think he was strict? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm confused here. Hold on. <laughs> but you obviously... Um, perspective. Yeah, it's perspective. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. But, and we're going to get into each one's stories where you guys are all at now. And then this, this, what about you? Um, not really for me. I mean, the way I am, I've always loved obeying rules, whether <laughs> they're strict or not. So mm -hmm. it was super easy for me. I loved it. And what, what about your sister, Kay Kayla? Um, yeah, I think it was so, it was such a different journey for each one of us. Mm -hmm. And we all struggled with, I think, different aspects of it. For me, it was, it was all good growing up. And then, you know, I hit a stage where I was just like, I don't know, like, that's kind of my parents thing and the rules and everything is a little much, but I never really, you know, was super rebellious against it. Um, but now, I mean, I'm loving it. And like Kelsey said, the different stages you are in life, it just, it comes in handy. Like now being older and having to, you know, just for example, find a church on my own, like any questions I have, I can just always go to my dad and ask like, what do you think about this? And I, and I heard him say this, is that like, doctrinally correct you know type thing so that's a really big part of it mm -hmm. right now being older and that's that that helps with the guidance because you know obviously a lot of a lot of guys and girls don't have that father figure or even that not even necessarily the father figure but just a spiritual leader to direct mm -hmm. you and, and to help in making decisions i mean i i think about a lot of the bad bad girls or just girls <laughs> that i've dated i always dated crazy girls except for my wife she's like the only normal <laughs> one but uh those, a lot of those girls didn't have guidance, you know, and they were running amok because they didn't have that, that spiritual leader or that father in their lives giving them, you know, the counsel. Whether you like, whether you guys agreed to it, like it at all, but at the end of the day, you walk away and, you know, I always knew when my dad would tell me things, I'd be like, forget that, dude, whatever. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not no pastor, like, whatever. But then when I leave, you know, I'd know in the back of my head, like, yeah, I shouldn't be doing that stuff. Yeah, yeah we're lucky. Did it, did it ever, do you think it ever, like, um, veered you away from Christianity at all, the the rules or? Uh, maybe at a certain point, it didn't veer me away personally, but it definitely made me question what I wanted for myself, considering this is like their way was the only way since I was born. So when you get to a certain age and try to figure out what your way is on your own, it kind of just makes you venture off considering you were always told that there's one way and no other way so that's and, and you out of the four uh, daughters uh you kind of want you you want to see what the um <laughs> what's on the out on the other side, other side. <laughs> like you like me i ventured out because i i grew up also obviously uh -huh. in the church and i knew that this was like the the way the one way yeah yeah i i didn't too much need to know what was on the other side it was more about needing to feel like i that I was a good enough person to make decisions on my own. And when mm. you're still underage, parents are just going to believe that you can do that. So that's where the constant rules came in and the no to going out, no to going to a party, no to hang out with certain friends and stuff. And I just wanted to feel accepted so that someone believed in me that I can make a choice in the world on my own and not mess up. So that's where I really struggled with wanting to do things by myself. Yeah, so that's where that came from. But then you guys. Yeah, I, I never struggled in this area either. You, I don't you know. You didn't? Yeah, uh -uh. you were just like, these are the rules yep. of the house. And, yep. and I knew it was less trouble that way, and but I enjoyed doing it. It wasn't really a struggle. So, like my brother, Shane, you know, he never drank or did any. Yeah. He, he 
he was like you. Mm -hmm. You know, where I relate more to your sister. Where I was like, I got to do this. And what, what about you? Same thing? Yeah, yeah. same thing. Um, I had my doubts, and I still do. And that's where I'm, like, super grateful for him because I'm like, well, then how did this happen? Or how did that come about? And he always, like, reassures me. And, With like, Christianity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, so. that's amazing. And I, I just want to... Uh, yeah, go for it, Aaron. Say that it it's not like it's something that uh, the perspectives that the girls have, I think that's one big, uh, huge factor because girls go through all kinds of stages. They go through, does my dad um, you know, love me? Does my dad understand my passions? Does my dad understand my, my dreams? And one of, the, one of the best books I've ever read uh, was uh, Daddy Dates. And it's a really good book on, on dating your daughters, really taking them out and finding out what, what they're made about and, and getting to know them as, as friends. And then uh, ultimately, uh, emotionally, the intimacy that girls need is, is number one. And I think that two older girls, and Kayla can attest to this, it's working like a dog, trying to make uh, ends meet, trying to establish my career as a father. So the beginning of my years, my, my two oldest daughters may have had less time with me as a father. And, mm -hmm. and me looking back in retrospect, looking back saying, okay, if I could have done it over because I'm not, nobody's perfect and the way they're talking about me, it's like, who are they talking about? I don't know, that's not me. Mm -hmm. and if you feel some regret, as a, as a dad and pastor, just that's just the title. But you feel some regret in, in some sense as a, as a true uh, father, looking back on the past saying, I wish I could have done a little bit different. I wish I could have listened a little more. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really feel that the, the Lord is uh, trying to share with fathers today. Uh, take time. You're going to have to make less money. You're going to have to live in a less uh, nicer home or whatever it's going to take or mm -hmm. maybe drive the, the Honda instead of the Beamer. But you're going to have to make the, the choices just to make the extra time you need with daughters because they're not like the guys where, okay, I'm going to take them to, to wrestling or I'm going to take them to football or baseball or whatever I'm going to do. I'm, we're just going to hang out. We're going to talk and I'm going to teach these men to be, these young men to be godly men. But with girls, it's like you got to sit down and listen and it takes time and you got to hear their passions and their dreams. And so it could have been where the two younger ones had more of my time because mm -hmm. I was a little bit more established mm -hmm. as the younger ones were going up in those those critical years. So mm -hmm. um, that's what I just wanted to share that. Yeah, no, for for sure. And I think about that <clears throat> stuff too, even like with, with my daughters, you know, growing, like it's, you have to be around. It's like, yeah. it's, it's and but it's that war of like the mm -hmm. job and the the call and the, the and you have the wife and the, it's everything. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty radical. Well, you guys, hey, you you guys um, you guys grew up and you guys were homeschooled, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right. Homeschooled, but you guys weren't sheltered. You guys were also in dance. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But that just sounds like crazy <laughs> to me. Yeah. So you're homeschooled because people go, <laughs> I'm going to homeschool my kids because I'm going to kind of like, you know, yeah. protect them in a sense. <laughs> but then it's like dance. Yeah. <laughs> So what, yeah, what, what, what kind of, thing? go ahead, uh, Kayla, Kayla. I was just going to say, it's not like our mom signed us up for any of that. It was my dad. Like, <laughs> I'm the dad? <laughs> yeah. Dude, that he is. He walked by the dance studio, grabbed a brochure, took it to my mom, and thought he was just going to sign us up for like, you know, ballet <laughs> class or whatever. Yeah. And little did he know, we all fell in love with it. And for the rest of our, I mean, the young, you know, for the past 15 years, whatever, we were dancing. We were at the studio like Monday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m., like training all yeah. the time. We're competing all over the country. So it was like, it was no just little ballet class. Like it became a lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. So he didn't know what he was getting himself into. <laughs> but that, <laughs> he's like, why did I When is this going to be over? When is this going to be over? So, uh, well, on top of that, that's actually good because, um, you know, when a lot of people that are homeschooled, they kind of miss out on. Yeah. Being kind of normal in a sense, I don't know. <laughs> social, social, like, yeah. social, yeah. And you know, because like you, the question was like, Ryan, are you guys going to homeschool your kids? And I don't know. I don't want to homeschool our kids mm -hmm. because <laughs> um, now, and and I'm not talking against bad against homeschool. I have the guys that work with us, the Royals. They're in homeschool, and those kids are they went to private school or they went to school, public school, and then they went to homeschools. But they love homeschools because mm -hmm. they're doing it so they could excel their wrestling right. careers. Yeah. you know, I mean, they're state champions and the whole the whole thing with the church boys, but. It's not bad, but I want that interaction. And if they do decide to, if it's so far ahead, if they do decide to do homeschool, they got to be in sports. Yeah. Like they got to go skate, surf, yeah. play soccer, football. I don't care what they do. Need something. Golf. If they want, my, my wife likes to play golf. I'm like, 
Golf? <laughs> Whatever. Let them do something, right? Yeah. But that, that actually brought, you know, you guys to be social and interactive with people. And that's a cool thing. So let's 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 not get off track here. Let's get back to the dating part. <laughs> so now you guys are, you know, you guys are 24 and on down. Um First of all, growing up from your dad's influence, having, you know, your dad's a man of God. I know him. Dude, I love your dad. Like, seriously, the dude's epic. I wish I could work with him <laughs> um, and be around him every day because um, I love his whole vibe. But um, growing up, what kind of man were you guys Were you guys looking for? Were you guys looking for bad boys, good boys? <laughs> um, um, I think it differs for all of us, definitely. But um, like me sticking to what I was taught, they taught us from when we were little, you know, what to look for in a godly man. And um, so growing up... What I did mean, that look like? Um, yeah. Well, respectful. <laughs> um, because there's there's guys listening and they don't, maybe they don't even know what a, what, it, yeah. what a godly man... Maybe there's girls, hey, better yet. There's <laughs> girls that are listening too that are your age yeah. or younger... And they're, they're, every girl wants a, a guy and mm -hmm. every guy wants a girl. Like that's just yeah. the way God created yeah. us. Yeah. And they don't know what it looks like. The most important thing and the first thing you have to figure out um, is if they're on fire for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then it's pretty much everything is going to fall in line, you know, besides Hopefully. personality things. <laughs> Hopefully. What's on fire look but, like? Um, on fire for the Lord, you know, you'll just be able to tell. It's not like... Hey, I go to church. I worship. <laughs> I read my Bible. Like, okay. It's something you'll just see in who they are because if they truly are on fire for the Lord, they're going to reflect Jesus and you'll see that. And which means that they're not going to try and yeah. hook up with you. Exactly. Exactly. And, the, and they'll treat you like you deserve to be treated as a daughter of the king. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. See, because a lot of people don't understand what that what that looks like. Yeah. 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 And, and when we yeah. when we were um, little, I remember this. I don't know if the girls do, but we would. He would. My dad would sit us down and he'd say, "Okay, we're gonna have boyfriend class." <laughs> and we'd sit down and he'd pull like this whiteboard out or something. No or way. Something. <laughs> and he would he would draw a boy in the middle, like a stick figure, and then around it he would draw these like characteristics, like. Okay, now boys, they have to be clean. You have to make sure they're washing their hands. And so, like, we're young, so he's, you know, telling us these things. You have to make sure they're they're clean. And and boys don't wash their hands sometimes. And sometimes they pick their nose and then they eat their burritos and it's gross. You know, like teaching us that. And then he would say, and now make sure that the boy loves their mom and is respectful to their mom. And that was a big thing. And at, even to this day, I'm always like in the back of my head, like, does he respect his mom? Like, that's a mm -hmm. big deal. And um, so that that's fun to think back on. Because if they don't <laughs> respect their mom, then they're gonna not gonna respect you. It's gonna yeah. all kind of right. all kind of it all drops down. Yeah, I heard um, a while back. I heard something. Someone said, "If the boy treats their mother like a queen, they'll treat you like a princess." Oh, so. nice. <laughs> I like that. If you guys just tuned in, you're listening to Live with Ryan Reese. I have a whole family, the Gonzalez family in studio, ages from 24 to 18, and we're talking about Christian dating and um, what's, what kind of man to look for, what kind of guys these, guys these girls were looking for. Now, what about you? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> um, I always went into dating with the hope for the guy that my parents wanted me to date because that's what I wanted because I knew deep down that was going to be the best fit. And I just always ended up with the opposite. It's not that I was looking for the opposite. How? I How'd just... you end up? Because a lot of people end up with the opposite. I mean, I could tell you why I ended up with psychopaths. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 where did I meet them? Bars. Yeah. yeah. Bad events. I don't know. Not church. <laughs> It might have even just been um, me trying to find someone who wasn't like so much like the world I was used to, like my parents and my home yeah. and how everything was. Maybe I was attracted to like an out, like a little out, which would be like a guy or whoever that was not like that. So I could just have like a, I don't know, like a double life, if you want to say, or just like a little person that could you know, show me or make me feel like, different than I always did at yeah. home. And that wasn't ever the goal, but I think that's maybe what attracted me to ending up with the wrong type of guys every time I was hunting. <laughs> I, I, rela I relate to you so much. Yeah. I do, seriously. Just talking to you and like, <clears throat> I, 
and, and you don't know what it is in you. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not like you're we were trying yeah. to to do anything to hurt anyone yeah. or anything, but it's just it was just this pull, I guess. Yeah, it's, it wasn't my goal. It was just the attraction, and I guess it, the forbidden fruit. <laughs> <laughs> it happened in the garden a long time ago. Depending yeah. on the person, you're attracted to certain things, and I guess I was the only one that was attracted to something other than what I grew up in, and the rest of them are just perfect. So. And, <laughs> and it's, no. it's funny how Ryan says that because it's like, okay, you go back to the garden, you look at the the story, you look at the forbidden fruit, you look at uh, Adam and Eve, and where was Adam when she was being tempted? He's like probably out there looking at the oak trees or saying, oh, that's, that's a beautiful this or that. And he should have where he should have been with his wife. He should have been there uh, spending time with his wife, ministering to his wife or just talking with her or whatever. And so it's the same with daughters. If, if the father figure's not there, what happens? They're, they're looking for intimacy and emotional intimacy somewhere else. If they don't get it from their dad, they're going to get it from somebody else. So it's like, okay, honey, when we're raising these daughters, I need to have time with my daughter. I need to have talks with my daughter. I need to do everything I can to make sure she's not looking for this emotional security from another guy, that she gets it from her dad first, and then she knows what to look for, and then she doesn't have to, like, in a sense, go look for that that outside excitement or outside double life. Which, I, which is weird because I yeah. never felt like he wasn't there in that area at all. So I don't know really what drove me to needing that type of comfort from someone else rather than him because he constantly was affectionate and everything that he <laughs> could do as a father to yeah. us. So I, I don't think any of us were ever missing that. I don't know if it yeah. was me just personally, though, that needed something that went a little farther than what a dad can offer when it comes to a relationship with a guy. I think that might have been the only reason why I felt like I needed to venture out. Otherwise, my dad never lacked in that area at all. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, in perspective, I, I do look back and say, okay, I could have done something. I think we all say more. that. Yeah. yeah. I think we all say that. <laughs> beating yourself up. <laughs> we, all, we, all, we all say that. That's just life. <laughs> yeah. right? you, you live and learn, and then you have all this wisdom when you're old, and you're like, man, now <laughs> yeah. I have all this wisdom. Why didn't I have this wisdom back when I was young? <laughs> well, I got a question for you. And Kayla Dayton. You forgot to ask Kayla. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Kayla. Sorry, Kayla. It's non-existent. <laughs> it's non-existent? <laughs> <laughs> No, you're good. I don't have really anything to add. I'm not dating right now. So. <laughs> Let me well, just... hey, well, okay, well, why, uh, how come you're not going out dating? There's dating apps. There's all these different things that you could, you know, engage in. Why, why are you waiting? Why not just go out and date a bunch of people and find out? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely the culture of people my age and, and where I'm at, especially, so I'm in graduate school and... Mm -hmm. For one, it's very busy, so I don't have much time, but, you know, people always say it's just an excuse that you don't have time. Um, but anyways, the culture is very, like, you know, get on the app, meet someone, go on dates, but, you know, right now I just have a contentment of where the Lord has me and being single, and I don't want to rush the Lord's timing at all, and um, I'm not against, you know, dating sites or anything, but I think that when the Lord moves me to either, you know, pursue pursue someone or or just pursue trying to meet someone type thing um it'll happen and i'm not worried about it right now and i'm content totally you know just doing what the lord has me doing right now so i think I'm that good. um yeah no that's that's good i think a lot of people go out and the reason why i, I challenge you in that way is because I'm, i believe 100 percent that what you're doing is correct you got to wait on the lord and when it's his time, he'll bring that. He'll 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 put you guys. He'll you guys will cross paths. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go hunting. Mm -hmm. God knows where yeah. you're at. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he knows where your husband's at. <laughs> and even just like with my relationship, God was working on my wife, mm -hmm. like taking her. Like she was working in New York at the time. She was mm -hmm. working yeah. with the Winkleboss twins, the Facebook guys. Wow. And God had to like pull her out of that and bring her back to the West Coast where she was from. And then God you brought, brought, brought uh, used one of her friends to bring her to church tonight where I was teaching, and we crossed paths. And I was like, who is that? What's <laughs> <Right>. up? <laughs> you know? But I didn't, I was single for six years, and I waited. I didn't kiss a girl. I didn't hold a hand. I didn't do nothing. I just waited. Mm -hmm. And God was preparing my heart. I didn't even know how to treat girls yeah. at the time. You know? And God had to do a work in her life. 
And that's that's the whole thing is like you should you got to wait on God. And when right. you could go out and date right now and think about how much time you'd be wasting, right? If yeah. you're dating just random dudes that yeah. that are just gonna go nowhere. Yeah. 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 It's a waste of dating is a waste of time, mm-hmm. honestly. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. A little bit. So, so yeah. I, dude, I am like a hundred percent. I'm not. A, I'm not against it. But I, I see these people like on these apps and they're just dating all these different people and it's just like, what a waste. Wait yeah. on God mm-hmm. and let God bring that person. And then you aren't wasting your time. Even in conversations, you give your heart to people. Right, yeah. Seriously. Yeah. You, I mean, mm-hmm. you have these uh, girls, you know, you have emotional relationships mm-hmm. and it could be uh-huh. gnarlier than even sleeping with someone, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. We went out our first date. Wendy and I were with groups of friends because I think there's more... Um, there's more accountability if you uh, find out uh, some of the friends at church, some of your your guy friends, some of the girlfriends. You should group date in groups. You read J- uh, James Dobson's books. It's all about really being accountable and uh, being above reproach, like the word says, and um, abstaining from sexual immorality. First Thessalonians of how possessing your own body in yeah. honor to the Lord, and um, and that's that's where where I think that. The young guys are uh, really being distracted now, and instead of having a routine, instead of having a, a um, being busy for the things of the Lord, they're just they have too much idle time, and the idle time is making them okay. I'll get on a porn site, or I'll go do this, or I'll go do that. It's like, wait a minute, don't you have goals in your life? Don't you have? Uh, don't you want to uh, be a, a great businessman for God? Don't you have a a great uh, passion for God in whatever you do? Uh, you want to be a great engineer for God. It's almost like the guys are missing that 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 uh, direction. And I tell Kayla all the time, I'm praying for either a doctor, a lawyer, <laughs> or an NFL drafty. We're going to get into that <laughs> right yeah. after the break. We're going to be going to the break soon. But I want to make one thing uh, clear because we're going to talk about the guy that you're look- that you guys are looking for, or, you know, all that good stuff. But um, I want to be clear, I'm not anti dating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to put myself in the situation. If I was young and I'm I'm wa- on fire for God. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for a girl that's on fire for God too. Right. Because I don't think there's yeah. anything, a problem, you know, dating when you're young and you're both on fire and you're serving Jesus mm-hmm. together and you're hanging out in group situations and you're not yeah. ending up yeah. in yeah. private prayer meetings in your bedroom. <laughs> yeah, that's you're, right. you're courting. You don't want to be, yeah. You're you don't want to be speaking. That's when you start playing baseball. And you yeah. don't want to speak. Yeah, you start speaking in tongues <laughs> the other way. Exactly. <laughs> Going from base to base, and we've already talked about bases. We don't want to play any baseball. No. We're not going to any bases, first base, second base. We want to be holy as he yeah. is holy, and that's Jesus Christ. Ooh. Yes. That's right. Oh, and something to touch back on, because, a lot, you know, a lot of girls look into um, dating sites and apps, and it's kind of a new thing to rush things like that. But I read once that... Um, the Lord made this world and like he made the universe and if we're not trusting that he can bring the right guy or right girl into our lives at the right time, like he can handle it. He made- He can know, handle it. He's <laughs> got it. <laughs> you he's got you it can trust control. him. He hasn't forgotten. <clears throat> yeah. So. Well, you know what? We only have like a minute before break, but I want to plug something. This is uh, Live with Ryan Reese. Um, I'm in studio with, with uh, Aaron Gonzalez and his daughters, Kayla, Kelsey, Brooke, and Hope. And we're talking about Christian dating. Um, if you guys don't know about the Whosoever's Movement, you can check it out at thewhosoevers.com. We do high school tours. We bring a concert to the public schools, play, give the gospel, Love on the kids, give them free pizza, and it's all free. And you could book it at info at thewhosoevers.com or go to our website, thewhosoevers.com. Um, it's free, it's sick, and it's we hear amazing, <clears throat> cool stories. I was just at a school in um, Chula Vista, and about a year ago, I went there and we did a concert for this kit for the school. And there was one girl in a wheelchair that wasn't having it. I loved on her for about an hour and a half after the school event. It turns out she said she was out of it because she took a bunch of pills and she tried committing suicide 16 years old. And I just loved on her, gave her books, checked up on her for about six months and then she gave her life to the Lord one day. And now she invited us back to go to their school. And we were uh, we did a concert back at their school. She's a leader in the Christian club. Oh, wow. And this That's is what awesome. it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. And we yeah. want to encourage Christians, Christians mm-hmm. that are there. Yeah. We want to encourage them to be great. God created them as masterpieces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, we want to love on the non-Christians and let them know that there's a God that loves them and forgives them of everything they've ever done. Amen. Yeah. So that's what it's all about. We will be back in about two minutes. <laughs> Live 
Live with Ryan Race coming up. Is everything all right? Sure. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, I think I speak for the entire administration when I say... What do you do? Now, back to live with Ryan Reese. Don't say we didn't warn you. Loud noises! <laughs> Like, well, we're, we're 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 back on air, by the way. Uh, no. How old do I? How old do you think I am? I'm 21. He's like 21 I'd say plus 35. 18. Thir- <laughs> oh, are you- I looked that whole. You remember the 35? No, I say 31 okay. and a half. This is the closest. Yeah, not 30. Wait till he tells I, you the I'm truth. Sure. I say 32. I am 40. Oh, wow. I'm 40 I went, years old. No. I remember he was in my. <laughs> but you don't look 40, that's for sure. Thank you. You don't look 40 at all. I think it's the hair. It's yeah. The hair. Keep I, the hair. I stay diet. young. I diet. Good. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> I diet. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. I don't diet. This is whole, all natural, ladies, okay? Whole, whole food. This is Southern California natural. This is called the ombre, okay? <laughs> I'm just joking. It's a surfer Ombre hair. de Tijuana. It's, it's from surfing, you know? Yeah. It's, it, it lights up. My, my wife has to go to the salon to, to pay for the ombre. I just uh-huh. get it from surfing. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Saving money. Bless. Can you believe it? <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it. Actually, even all the drugs I've done and all the alcohol I've drank, mm. the fact that I don't look like I'm 100 years old. That's called God's <laughs> grace. Praise the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And vitamins. Woo. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, let's get back into this dating thing, all right? Mm-hmm. All right. So um, here we go. So you guys, let's let's talk about, um, well, you, you kind of walked, we were talking about guys that you guys were looking for, and we were talking about looking for guys that were on fire, guys that had mm-hmm. a relationship with Jesus Christ, not guys that just said... <laughs> Say, oh, yeah, you know, I read my Proverbs every day yeah. and um, I go to church once a month. Yeah. This is what you don't look for, okay? Right. <laughs> Guys that say, I've talked to girls like, oh, yeah, so you go to church? Uh, yeah, I try and go about once a month. Yeah. Okay, eh, problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, do, you, uh, do you read the Bible? You, I try to get by to read it every, you know, once in a while. I, I like to read it, mm-hmm. you know. I go to church on Christmas and... <laughs> eh, don't date those guys or girls that do that stuff. It's a guy that's plugged into church, yeah. and you're uh, you're seeing this this um, fruit. this fruit. And in, yeah. in I'm trying to the guy about, that you can see it without him talking. His there life. you go. That's you cool. see his Jesus. Life. I was trying yeah. to think about how to 
Like say fruit, fruit. cuz people that don't know what fruit yeah. spiritual fruit is they're like around with fruit these are talking about fruit trees He's now you're carrying around fruit <laughs> it's um you you see someone's life and their actions right. yeah. and if their actions are like crazy partying drinking mm-hmm. drugs uh greed anger all these things that's that's like not good fruit yeah, and you can tell a lot by the Instagram pages. Oh my! By God. the let's way, talk, let's talk about that. You can like if you're yeah. you meet this guy, okay? And most girls will go search him on Instagram. We <laughs> all do it. We all do. It's called Insta stalking. You know, lurking. <laughs> and, Hard. And by the profile, you can so see it. You see if they're posting photos with girls or partying. Like, okay, I don't think they're walking with Jesus very strong. That like, you'll be able to tell, you know? So, Look for the guys that post those verses. So even if they have like, uh, you know, a verse, you know, <laughs> prayer without ceasing and then they're out taking beer bongs. Exactly. What do you think? No, no. Be scared no. of those ones too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ask Kayla about her Carolina boys. Uh, all right, Kayla, let's talk about some Carolina boys out there. No, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only thing I could touch on is that like, you see a lot of guys Instagram per se, or you know they say, "Yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I go to church." Um, and maybe they'll post a verse, you know, once, and you're like, "Oh, this is cool," you know, or his his bio in Instagram is like a verse and a cross or whatever. <laughs> like, oh, okay, we're we're looking good, but then yeah. it's just like you know, seven days straight of of other not so godly things, and you know, it's it's so you gotta really you gotta search and you gotta just dis- discern. Where they're at. I think that goes down to got people that um, are rooted and grounded in God's word, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because there's people that that go to church and they've they've said the prayer, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. But it's a, and if you're listening, this is a, it's a relationship with Jesus yeah. Christ. Mm-hmm. It's not just like yeah, yeah, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm-hmm. But then the, the Bible also talks about. You know, people that are going to show up to heaven and, and they're going to say, hey, you know, I prophesied your name. I prayed this and that. Mm-hmm. Let me get in. And Jesus yeah. is like, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Right. It's a relationship. And then Jesus also says, you know, you know, these kind of people will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Mm-hmm. If you give your life to Jesus and you're, you know, you have your little verse on your, your Instagram and you're doing <laughs> your great little quotes and you got the Christianese talk. <laughs> oh, bless you, brother. And all this <laughs> stuff. You go to church once a month, Mm -hmm. but your life is not adding up to what the Bible teaches Mm -hmm. and you're not producing good fruit and you're living after your, you gave your life to God. And if you're, if you, if you're living the same way that you were before you gave your life to God, there is a serious problem. And I've said this before. I said, if you call yourself a Christian and there's been no change in your life and you're living the same lifestyle, you're not saved. People are like, well, you can't say that, right? Well, Mm -hmm. Jesus says, if you want, you know, Nicodemus came to Jesus one night. You guys know the story, John 3. Mm. He says, hey, man, what do I have to do? And Jesus says, man, you got to be born again. He's like, calling my mom's womb and like pop back out again. Jesus, (laughs) you're tripping like, what? (laughs) He's like, no, man, like where you see the wind blow, you know, in the same way, that's how you see the Holy Spirit. You don't see the the Holy Spirit, but you see the effects of the Holy Spirit with with the wind blowing the leaves. And that's what happens with our lives. Your lives transform. You stop cussing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you stop watching pornography. Mm-hmm. You stop lying. And these things just happen supernaturally. You don't want to date a Christian girl and go to first base, second base, or third base. Yeah. You don't want to do those things because there's a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. It Don't be fooled. Like you said, don't be fooled by by people pulling their Christian card. Mm-hmm. Hey, you'll know someone's life if you just hang out and just have a conversation yep. with them. Mm-hmm. What comes, what are they talking about? Right. Yeah. What music are they listening mm-hmm. to? <clears throat> what are they watching? Right. That, and that brings up a good story because one of my, or Brooke, our third daughter, she had the first boyfriend of all these boys that would come in their lives that actually wanted I to meet, uh, meet with me. I did. No, I'm sorry. Wait. Uh, oh. I'm talking about... I'm talking about is, is this the boyfriend interview? Yeah, this is the boyfriend interview. Let's hear a boyfriend interview. Yeah, so he comes into the uh, a place where we're <laughs> Wait, sitting. Brooke, Brooke is 20 years old. Yeah, the 20-year-old. Yeah. She gets... Wait, Brooke, yeah. 20 years she old. She gets sorry. a boyfriend that wants to t- ask my permission to date her. I said, wow, this is a big green light. This I've never happened to me. <laughs> All other guys are just kind of moving slow. Hi, I'm I'm so and so, and my daughter's, and I'm dating your daughter, whatever. But this is the first one that would stand up and 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 say and ask permission. I'm like, wow, this guy's pretty crazy. First thing I asked him, I said, how is your inner integrity? How is your inner life? 
Are you into pornography? Do you struggle with pornography? Straight Dude, up. I would he be asked tripping asked if a dad asked that. And then the second thing, the second thing says, don't take this as a judgmental father son thing. I said, uh, I, I want you to take it as that I'm. I, I want to see you. Uh, I want to know you uh, personally. I want to know how you're doing inside. Yeah. I care about the outside. He's a he's a he's a buff guy, a baseball player. So he's a. So he's what a what guy. happened when you uh -oh. asked? Him, so then I asked him that, and he was like, well. You know, like every every other guy, you know, sometimes you get tempted, sometimes you get struggle, you struggle with those things. But I've put, I've I've set up boundaries in my life to cut it out. And then I said, how about drinking? Because I remember my dad used to say, it's the drinking son that will ruin people's lives. I've, I've, he's seen it. He grew up in Mexico, and and he he saw his dad become an alcoholic, and his his uh, his brother's alcohol ruined their their lives. So he was really against social drinking and drinking growing up, and he taught us as sons. Watch your watch your little uh, time with alcohol because that'll destroy your life. And he said, and and, and so I asked him that. Nothing said, positive comes from alcohol anyway. <laughs> that's by the right. Way. I've never heard of anything positive. It's, <laughs> and so these two things, he he kind of like passed the test. The two the two big big ones. And of course, there's other things. But what when looking for and what fathers should look for with their for their daughters is they need to look for this this what Kent Hughes call, calls uh, spiritual uh, awareness. And that he that we are always aware that God is there, and that God is seeking to deliver us from temptation, that seeking to take us out of temptation. And the beautiful thing about it is he brings up that story about Potiphar's wife, and how yeah. Joseph yeah. said, "How could I do this wicked thing against God? How how could I do this sin against God?" So he calls it two things: it's wicked. And, he, and it's a sin against God. And if he wasn't spiritually aware of what was going on, that God was in the room too, and he would have fell. And with men today, young men today, they need to have this divine awareness that God's in the room all the time. Take him wherever you go on your dates and take him wherever you go and yeah. to the altar. Mm -hmm. and go yeah, I want to yeah. add something. That's 100%. And I like that story because he, Joseph... Is, right, it was Joseph, right? And he yeah. ran out of the room, Potiphar's yeah. wife. Mm -hmm. He was a young buck. Yeah. She, you know, she was dating Potiphar and he's a uh, high up in the... Mm -hmm. the Second um, to uh, yeah, Pharaoh. Right. And just like, you know, he you know, probably had this beautiful wife. He's a eunuch, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And he had a way to get out. He he ran out. And God always gives us a way out. And, you know, you, yeah. hear, Absolutely. you hear people say, well, oh, man, the temptation and this and that. But I go to the, I always go to that one verse that says, resist the devil and he will flee. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And when I think about resist, you know, do we really resist sin in our lives? Resist, when I think of resisting, I think of like one of those old like platoon movies or one of those Vietnam movies when, you know, they're fighting the Viet Cong and the guy's <laughs> jumping on him and he's like choking him out. And he has a knife. He's trying to stab the guy in the neck. <laughs> yeah. Well, what is the guy doing underneath? That guy's resisting. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's doing yeah. everything in his power because if he does not truly resist the enemy, then he's going to get a knife right into his neck. Mm. Mm. Now, the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. Mm. Wow. But how many times do, do we really resist? Resist is like, do or die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we just go, <laughs> I... Yeah, uh, temptation. Uh, the devil got me, <laughs> yeah. and they're like, yeah. "Yeah, I'm going to the ATM to get some money to go buy some weed." <laughs> the devil got me again. <laughs> you know what I'm and, saying? And like, yeah. there's no resisting there. Exactly. Right. And he also says to Timothy, "Flee youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, and love, peace with those who call of, on the Lord out of a pure heart." So not only do we flee the youthful lust, mm -hmm. get away from it, resist them, but then we got to pursue righteousness. That means you got to go to church. You got, I say these guys saying, oh, I'll get to church when I can. I work late. Or, oh, I'll get to church when I can. No, you got to get with fellowship with other believers. See, it says to call upon with those who call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. So if, if men are serious about God, they're going to, number one, resist, like you're saying. Number mm -hmm. two, flee. Pursue righteousness, number three. And then number four, they're going to they're gonna go. They're going to go where the fellowship is strong. They're not going to be dabbling by themselves. And, and what's the... Um, What's the uh, old saying um, about the devil and idleness? <laughs> idleness is the devil's playground. And so, you know, you're sitting around idle. You're not going to church. You're not in prayer. You're not hanging with your, your Christian friends. What's going to happen? You're going to be like that clay shot up. And then the, the enemy is just going to blast you out of the sky because you're just, you're, just, you're just idling out there. And you're mm -hmm. just going to get shot. He looks. Yep. He, he studies. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, 
Let's <clears throat> talk about what Christian dating looks like for the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> What does Christian dating look like? The guy better open the door for <laughs> yeah. my daughter or yes. I will shoot him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and he brought a shotgun. He has one. He likes to sit on the rocking chair in our front <laughs> yeah. porch when the guy comes for the first That's time. That's what Carolina Dude, did. With I just me. got a rocking chair and I have a shotgun. <laughs> Then I have two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Carolina. I was side by side too. So that's full cowboy. So the guys in Carolina are worse. I learned a little bit from them. You they know, got ARs, Franklin like, Graham, and all those guys. <laughs> oh, those guys are like those, those good old boys out there. They're uh, they, don't, right. they, don't, they don't they don't they don't play around. All right. Well, let's let's talk about the Christian dating. Who do you want? Who wants to start here? You want to start with the Hi. oldest on the uh, yeah, in Kayla. South Carolina, Kayla? <laughs> Christian dating. Yeah. Well. What is, what does it look like? Let's um you know to talk to the girls and that are they're listening. What do you, what do you, yeah, I, what do you, how I does Christian dating work for you or have you? Well, for, okay. So, uh, <laughs> I think honestly the best one to talk about this is Brooke. Um, I, I've seen so many girls, you know, try and date and stuff, but Brooke has done such a great job at really the like, portray, just seeking after God and, and her boyfriend seeking after God and that godly um, dating relationship, she's done great. I know the past in the past that, that I've dated, it hasn't been a full on godly relationship, and it's been you know, I have it's just not really been godly relationships. So I would go to Brooke on this one. Okay, before we get to Brooke, so I'm going to end it with Brooke. I want to go to Kelsey <laughs> because she, <laughs> you, you didn't date godly guys. E- so tell me about your journey into that world and then coming out. Yeah, basically, yeah, Brooke's the best uh, about doing it the right way. I'm the best that went into it the wrong way and came out the right way. Yes. So <laughs> Take us on that journey. Uh, <laughs> my, my small journey, I wasn't a big dater, but I had two serious relationships in my life. The first one when I was around 18. Went into it, was not very godly. It was godly from the outside, not on the inside. It only lasted about six months until I ended up rededicating my life to the Lord. So in order to make him realize that I was serious, I broke up with him. He decided to come around to the stage in life that I was in. We got back together and then that relationship just didn't end up working out, but for other reasons. And then strong in my faith after that, met my husband, then at the time, he's my husband now. But I met him at the okay, time. So you met him, he was a, your boyfriend at he the time. Was, yeah, he was my boyfriend at the time. How old he, were you at that time? I was twen- 19. Okay. Met him when I was 19. So it was not long after my first relationship. I, I'm, I'm not good at being single. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and it started off uh, with me strong in the Lord like I was because I had rededicated my life around 18. And slowly into our, our relationship because I was dipping my toes in the water um, with a guy who wasn't on the same page as me, obviously it's easier to bring someone down than it is to bring someone up. So it definitely... So you're dating a guy that's not a Christian at yeah, this point. Yeah, so I definitely uh, got brought down and we we had our relationship um, the ugly way for a little while and I ended up getting pregnant about a year into our relationship and then halfway through my pregnancy was kind of an eye-opening point in our relationship considering we wanted to get married, but had been doing things a little off the off of the um, route. My parents always hoped that I would do it. Both of us felt guilty in that way, so we wanted to kind of take a few steps back and start the process of how we were living our lives and do it the right way from as, you know, as much as we could at that point, we're already pregnant. So around six months pregnant, me and him decided to take marriage seriously. And in doing that, we did marriage counseling through our church and we decided we wouldn't get married unless we passed that since it's sort of like a pass, a personal pass or fail, not an actual one. (laughs) Um, So after we went through the counseling, we decided to get married and regardless of when that was, we didn't think it was um, a small enough matter to rush. So it took us around six months to do that marriage counseling. Um, with whenever When we finished, she was two weeks old, and then we ended up getting married. So it started off rocky, but we ended it the right way, and especially for her, um, 
that way one day if anything if she ever decides to take the wrong path or do anything like I did I'll be able to let her know that it doesn't mean it's the end there's always a time you can turn around no matter how deep or what you have struggled with or the wrong turns you may have made it's never too late so yeah. at least we can carry that with us for well, the rest of our life it's it's that's awesome mm. um, there's a, there are people out there that that they're just um, hanging out say not even really dating and they get pregnant and then people want to rush them into to get married mm -hmm. and you know you gotta you gotta get plugged into church mm. no I always say two wrongs don't make a right like even to rush if you're just dating and you don't even know the guy and just cause you have a kid to go get married cause that normally ends up in divorce anyway yeah. mm -hmm. so like I don't think like you know because this is just like a, I mean I don't even know what people think <laughs> this is my opinion and mm. everyone you know that I just don't believe that two wrongs make a right. And the way you guys did it is you guys went to God. You decided this is a big deal. We're going to get married. We got a kid. We better make sure we're on the same page. Yeah. Because if we just jump into this, like, yeah. hey, my mom and dad want me to get married because I'm a Christian and I'm going to do things right all of a sudden. Yeah. And, and the guy's like <laughs> out to lunch. Yeah. <laughs> or the Seriously. girl's out to lunch. And then you're like, okay, let's do it because we want to be right before God. But then it ends up in a... Divorce anyway. And I'm like, I'm not going to make the decision to get married while I'm pregnant. I don't even know. What I'm, I'm not even in my right mind. So I we love, have to do counseling. I love the fact that you did this <laughs> because this is this is good. And, and people may disagree. Like, you know, they got to be right before. Yeah. You, you be right before God. You still got your baby in your stomach. Mm -hmm. You're right before God. You're not sleeping together anymore. Mm -hmm. You're not doing any of that stuff. And then let God work out the details. And then in the time, come together mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe maybe it's not you guys don't come together you know yeah. like yeah, I'm not you depends. but anyone that's yeah. listening mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and it's all in God's timing I mean I I wouldn't necessarily say that whole story was for no reason I feel like God has a plan for everything that happens in your life so I'm taking what happened to me and just using it for the better in the future advice I can give my kids and the stories I can tell other people it's amazing yeah and and I'm and I'm speaking from experience the reason why I'm so down with this is because I was engaged to a girl and we got married by the court mm -hmm. and we were going to have a wedding but she ended up aborting my kid the, oh. the set of twins mm. and she already boarded a kid before that so oh that was gosh. a set of twins and, and another girl or another kid before that so I went and got married rushed into it and it wasn't even the right decision mm -hmm. mm. and then she aborted the kid so then I had I just pulled away from her and, w and walked away and that was even messier Yeah. so this is why I'm so yeah. pro that because I lived it yeah, mm -hmm. but you had the good. You got you got the good end of the stick. Yeah, obviously That's we were awesome. we were more than rushed to get married as soon as we could. I was about to have a baby, but to just put that aside and step back and Focus do that process. On Jesus. Yeah, yes. we knew that was in the long run going to be way more worth it than just getting married as quick as we could because we we're going to have a baby like most people. Would, Two so. wrongs don't make a right. Right. But you did it amazing. That's awesome. Okay, Brooke, <laughs> I think we have like six more minutes. So tell me, tell us. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that's a long time though. Six yeah, minutes. I'll go. I'll go quick. Um, well, first off, I have to give all glory to God for all the knowledge I've gained in the past like two years. Um, uh, okay, so I grew up. I wasn't really ever like into guys like. Not in a weird way. I just was never looking for that. My mom questioned me one time. She's like, do you like guys? I'm like, oh, gosh. Yes. Hey, that's normal in this society. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. So I was never, like, really looking. I didn't care about dating. and um, But I got into a relationship at 17. It was my first relationship. And um, I didn't know in the, in the time, but it was a really immature, unhealthy relationship. And it ended up not working out. It drew me away from the Lord. And the Lord saved me from that. And then I had about a year, you know, um, healing from that relationship, and I learned a lot. And in those, in that year of kind of being just me and the Lord, I learned, you know, two major things um, that I love to share with girls now. The first being, you have to know your self worth, because I think a lot of the times girls will just commit to relationships or just jump into the first thing that comes to them because, you know, they think that'll be the only thing, or they think that's all they're worthy of deserving. But when you know who you are in Christ and you're the daughter of the king of the universe, that's really powerful. Yep. And if you can genuinely believe that, it can really change your outlook on, you know, you can be bold and stand up and, and know what you deserve. It's not a prideful thing. It's just knowing who you are, how special you are. And then two, you have to be content in just your life and the Lord. I had to get to a point where I wanted to be able to say, 
if I never get married my whole life, I'm going to be okay with that because Jesus is enough. Because Preach. I think I used to get... <laughs> Preach. <laughs> yes. You know, you know, like I think it's common to, you know, especially at my age to just want a boyfriend and want to get married and all this stuff. But um, that's not obviously the right heart set. So, or heart, place for your heart. Right. So if you can um, get to a place where you're content with you and the Lord and hey, if you're not going to ever have a boyfriend, you're not, then I think that's great. But the Lord puts desires in our hearts for a reason, not to tease us. Yeah. And if you have that desire to be married one day and be a mom one day, um, he didn't do that for no reason. And it says, if you follow the Lord, he will give you of all, all the desires of your heart. And I truly stuck to that and just focused on me and Jesus, kept my eyes eternity bound. And um, one day this guy walked into my life, the one that, you know, talked to my dad and he's amazing. And it was more than I could have ever expected or prayed for. And it's totally a thing from the Lord. And um, I'm just really thankful. And yeah. now it's just a relationship where we're pursuing the Lord, living our own lives, but, you know, dating and, you know, courting each other and um, trying to use our relationship to glorify the Lord and just to prepare for the next step he has for us in his timing. Epic. <laughs> mm. Where are the young men? Step forward. Yeah. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> Come forward. <Yeah. laughs> Come to the interview yeah. room. <laughs> well, hey, we're, 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 uh, we're running out of time, but um, I want to... Th- yeah, yeah go for it. Um, how I see it, I've never had a boyfriend and I've never dated, but... <laughs> For the girls who are in my situation, Mm -hmm. I just go about it. Like, don't think too much about it. Don't be like, oh, I want a boyfriend. I want to cuddle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because when I do think about it, it makes me want it more than when I don't. So to the girls who are in my situation, just don't think about it too much (laughs) and you'll be good. (laughs) And, you know, when you're thinking about it so much, it's that idle time. Like, be busy. Mm -hmm. Go have Mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go have fun. And all that stuff's going to come in timing. Right. And God's going to bring... He'll bring you guys girls, guys, he'll bring you guys guys, <laughs> and he'll bring the girls to the guys. Yes, <laughs> hopefully they're guys. Yes. Gosh. What? Well, thank you guys for, thank Wait. you girls for being on. I, I'm confused too. Don't even worry about <laughs> I know, it. I know. I was like, what am I saying? I'm like. Mm-hmm. Um, I love you guys. It was awesome having you guys. Thank you. Um, thank you. Shoot. If, listeners, Thanks. if you uh, <laughs> believe in the Whosoever's Movement, <clears throat> go to the whosoever's.com. And maybe you're asking, what is the whosoever's movement? It's a movement leading the way to reflect Christ in culture. It's a movement of whosoever's leading the way. And how do we lead the way? We reflect Christ in culture. Here we are on this t- uh, television show. What is this? <laughs> Radio, <laughs> Radio show. show. We are, we are reflecting Christ in culture. And we're leading the way by encouraging and building people up. God, God's a God of love. He loves you. And no matter what you're going, what's going on in your life, God will come in and he will reveal himself. All you have to do is say, Jesus, come into my life, fill me with your Holy Spirit, and Amen. just take control of my life. He, Jesus is the creator of the universe. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we'll just end on that note. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> that's love it. Love Amen. you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. We'll, talk, we'll see you guys uh, or hear from you guys next week. This has been Live with Ryan Reese. To connect or find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for Live with Ryan Reese.